On November 1, 1512, the magnificent ceiling frescoes adorning the Vatican's Sistine Chapel were unveiled to the public for the first time. They were painted by a rising 33-year-old sculptor named Michelangelo Buonarotti. But the frescoes were almost never created. In 1508, Michelangelo was hard at work on Pope Julius II's marble tomb. When the Pope asked him to switch gears and decorate the Sistine Chapel ceiling, Michelangelo at first refused. After all, he considered himself a sculptor first rather than a painter, and he had no experience with frescoes, which are painted on wet plaster. But Pope Julius persisted, and Michelangelo reluctantly accepted the commission, spending four and a half years perched standing on scaffolding with brush in hand. He worked day and night. He literally lived up there in and above the scaffolding. Uh, he did not want anyone to see this until it was completed. When the Pope tried to sneak up there and try to see, and he actually spotted the Pope. The Pope was in disguise, but he recognized him, and Michelangelo started throwing wood pieces and other stuff at him to get him back down the scaffolding. A Hollywood veteran of 30 years, Martin Bialis and his company, Special Entertainment Events, specializes in large-scale exhibits. At Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, the exhibition, he has recreated one of the world's most iconic artistic achievements. It is being shown at the Big E Fairgrounds for the first time. The son of a Lutheran minister, Bialis recalls when he first visited the Sistine Chapel five years ago. Long lines, long wait, lots of people inside, lots of screaming and yelling, shoving, guards trying to take your camera, if, even if you were thinking about taking a photo. So it was a somewhat stressful experience. Because the frescoes are 60 feet above the floor, it's impossible to see them in any great detail. They look somewhat like a bigger stamp because they're way up high and you only have like 20 minutes. So you can't really see much or let alone study them individually. Bialis wondered how could the frescoes be brought down to a level where everyone could view them up close. So the idea was if I can reproduce these in the original size, the average size of one of the frescoes, is about 10 by 18 feet. The Last Judgment is 41 by 41 feet. So then we were looking for the images because you need high resolution images in order to reproduce them. It's not like a postcard or a poster. They're large reproductions. Bialis found the agency that gets the photos directly from the Vatican Museums, which in turn gave him exclusive worldwide rights and a 12-year license for the exhibit. In the summer of 2015, Bialis started with one exhibition unit in Montreal and soon added two more units because the demand was so high. The three units showcase all 34 frescoes and recently appeared in Shanghai, Munich, and New York at the World Trade Center. The fourth unit at the Big E is a smaller scaled-down version of the three, each of which typically used 10,000 square feet of space. Big E only has 3,500 square feet, so we designed a special unit where we show 13 original size frescoes. We show the Last Judgment in a 12 by 12 size, and the other ones are in a smaller size, but that way we can fit everything in here and the collection is complete. In the 1980s and 90s, the frescoes were restored to their original beauty, which is also when the photos were taken. We use a special textile material to give them the look and feel of a fresco, so it doesn't look like an oil painting or any kind of other piece of art. The exhibit features scenes from the Bible's Old and New Testament, such as Genesis, which tells the story of the creation of the world. Arguably, the most famous fresco is the creation of Adam, which focuses on the implied contact between God and his greatest creation, mankind. Genesis also includes the creation of Eve, which is the central painting in the arch ceiling and the fall of man, represented by the expulsion of Adam and Eve from paradise. The Great Flood depicts the largest punishment inflicted by God for the sins of mankind. The Old Testament includes the frescoes of seven biblical prophets, including Joel, all of whom foretold the coming of the Messiah. The prophet Daniel was shown writing, while Isaiah, who foretold the sacrificial death of Jesus, appears with two small figures who are considered the conveyors of God's message. The prophet Zechariah is portrayed as a venerable figure. Various ancestors of Christ are shown, along with five sibyls, who were revered for their prophetic powers. The Delphic sibyl is shown reading her scroll before being moved by the word of God. 
she foretold the coming Messiah will be mocked with a crown of thorns. In David and Goliath, Michelangelo depicts the moment of triumph with Goliath lying on the ground. 25 years after the ceiling frescoes, Michelangelo completed his final Sistine Chapel masterpiece, his visionary interpretation of The Last Judgment. It took Michelangelo four years to complete The Last Judgment, which appears above the western altar of the chapel. 390 individual figures are depicted on the 41 by 41 foot canvas. In the center is the figure of Christ, with Mary and the saints surrounding him. John the Baptist is recognized by his animal skins. Angels carry the tools of suffering from the crucifixion, and the resurrection of the dead reveals the chosen ones rising up into the heavens. The right side shows the fate of the dam being forced down into hell by demons. Look closely and you may notice Michelangelo's self-portrait. He was quite a depressed person, just his nature, and you can just see he is that image, that head and the arms and his body hanging down, dripping. The exhibit has received rave reviews and drawn record-breaking crowds wherever it has appeared. Especially when you see all 34, it's almost overwhelming. You know, they, they just say, oh, wow. We're really happy to be able to bring these to you up close so people can actually enjoy them. They can take as many photos as they like. There's a lot of other merchandise available, including t-shirts and jewelry, along with the souvenir guidebook which gives the history and details of each individual fresco. You don't want people to go through a college course here, you know, on Michelangelo. It's a light introduction to his works, and it's wonderful. So I think people will enjoy it uh, here at, the, at, at Big E. If you miss Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel exhibit, it's on tour across the U.S., Asia, and Europe for the next nine consecutive years. So there's still plenty of time to view the awe and wonder of one of the world's greatest artistic achievements in all its glory, without traveling to Rome. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic.